The design and research experience gives the student the opportunity really to take on the role of the professional. The senior design experience is just the capstone on all of that. You are the engineer, here is the money, here is the design problem, here are your mentors, here is your machine shop. Well, get on with it. We're currently working with Textron to develop a quadcopter landing system. Here I have the arm that's going to be actuating underneath the quadcopter. The first prototype that we developed was just so rudimentary that, you know, looking back on it now, it's kind of almost hilarious. During the design day next week, they'll be able to showcase all the work they've done, their innovations, their proof of concepts and prototypes. It's an opportunity to bring together everything the students have learned in core classes over the last three years and solve real-world engineering problems. You might forget about it and your coffee will cool down and you'll have this like lukewarm coffee that's not desirable. The first design had this fan which would help maintain the temperature, but it wasn't very user friendly. We had a lot of free time and space to design whatever we wanted. It fits right in here. I'm working with my team here around the clock to finish our design. We have one team who are working for CBID related to the famous Ebola suit that they developed and they wanted some assistance to develop the manufacturing side of that. They had made this mask that fits really nicely on some people but not on everyone so um, we were wondering how can we take their initial design and make it so that it'll fit anyone's face. It's a great ecosystem for medical innovation because you have these talented engineers that are hungry to solve problems. And then on the other side, you have clinicians that are working daily with patients and are, are frustrated by not being able to do what they want to do. I went to South Africa with Dr. Susan Harvey, who's our clinical sponsor. And we originally went to try to understand the problems surrounding diagnosis with breast cancer. And we walked away saying, what's the purpose in having great diagnosis if there's not real treatment? One of them is working on developing a wearable sensor for cystic fibrosis, and then sending the data from the sensor to an iPhone app. We are um, trying to simulate a sweat test right now. The design of the sensor is mostly the material science part of the project where it's designed out of a PDMS block here. Engineering is an example of a, a very advanced discipline really that's somewhere between an art and a science and a lifestyle choice. It's a community of established engineers and scientists and colleagues that raises up the next generation of engineers. Not a lot of people get to work in a huge shop like this with all the facilities that we have, all the, you know, the budget that we have, and it's been a really special experience. The hope is to bring this system to rural clinics in South Africa so that physicians can use our technology right there in the rural clinics. By gathering all this data, it will really help researchers and doctors understand the disease a lot more so that they can try to figure out better ways to help those people with cystic fibrosis live a healthier life. Our latest design definitely is a lot more user-friendly than our first design. The first time we flew it out, it was just so powerful. It was just great to see the, the rotor spinning. You can hear it just zooming around. It was so reactive to the remote. It was really uh, exhilarating. It feels really incredible to be working on something that could potentially save lives in the future.